Hello and welcome everybody to another YouTube video. This is going to be a deck profile of another deck that got a huge boost with Maze of Millennia and that is Labyrinth. Now this is going to be a pre Phantom Nightmare deck profile. The deck is going to change a little bit with Phantom Nightmare and we're going to talk a little bit about what's going to change but I think the deck remains relevant until after Phantom Nightmare. Obviously it's not a fire deck so I think it's not the best deck in the upcoming format but even if you're looking into Labyrinth post Phantom Nightmare I think this is going to be something for you once again this is a deck that i've built live on stream the entire deck building process is going to be available on the joshua schmidt plus channel so in this video we're just gonna i'm gonna briefly present the deck how it changes with transaction rollback you know the list that we've come up with on stream and if you're interested in a more in-depth deck building process video that's going to be up on the plus channel as well and yeah like i said if you enjoy this type of content let me know in the comments down below and if you have anything that you want me to test with phantom nightmare next week let me know as well without further ado let's hop into the deck profile this is going to be furniture labyrinth obviously you're going to have your your three arianas and you're going to max out on the furnitures of course well furniture i mean chandelier and stovey with transaction rollback uh one of the most insane things about the card is that it is a great furniture discard so you're going to definitely want to max on these furnitures i've decided to go with a little bit more of an experimental line of two ku clock and two arias the specific reasoning for these is that they are really really strong but they require to be drawn in like two to three card combos in the case of ku clock it's usually two card combos because with another furniture they go really hard arias is usually really strong in like three card combos which sounds worse than it actually is i feel like because you're playing so many labyrinth cards that drawing them in pairs of three is not that uncommon at the same time uh, playing them at three each to me felt excessive i felt like they were contributing to brick hands way too much at the same time playing only one felt like i didn't see as many powerful hands as i would like to because you know some of the most unfair things that labyrinth can do involves these two cards so this is why i'm trying out the two and two i'm usually the kind of guy i either like to play like three ofs or one ofs but i feel like like in this case i felt like it made sense to make an exception and then i decided to play one lady this is also something that i i mainly decided to do because uh, i think lady is is very very strong in the mirror match very annoying to deal with not that essential in other matchups it's a little bit of a win more card you know like if you ever get to the point where you can activate your trap cards and chain lady to it you're kind of already winning and um it doesn't really contribute to any plays on its own it's not really a combo starter unless you draw something like furniture big welcome and lady then it contributes to getting a bounce but in general i think one is fine unless you're expecting a lot of mirror matches and then obviously it's going to be one lovely for hand traps i've decided to do three ash three droll and three impermanence this is a lineup that i think is pretty good in this deck this is also something that i did because of the upcoming fire decks where i think droll and lockward is going to be at least solid this is one of the decks where you could also easily play nibiru though i've been very back and forth between droll and nibiru because in this deck nibiru is very likely to be paired with a different interruption because even if it's even if you don't draw ash or imperm you still have bonus chances of drawing your furniture plus ku clock or arias plus ariana plus whatever to basically pair your nibiru with another form of interruption even if your opponent gets to like a bear in the fleur so i think nibiru is also very strong in this deck and uh, these two are pretty interchangeable i decided to play the sharvara and the escape of the unchained the reasoning for this it's a really nice extension to your plays right it's like whenever you get the ku clock back for free the arias back for free or the stovi torby back for free you can do some pretty efficient combo lines off of just any two feet monsters you know going into a searching charvara popping one of your cards making an unchained soul of rage and setting the trap card to have like multiple layers of interruptions on your opponent's turn i've been really liking it in the games that i've played with it so far so i felt like it was worth including it my main reason for doing it was that um i wanted to try it to see if it's any good and the only way to do that is obviously to put cards into your deck and see how they flow you got extravagance i think this card is way too good to to pass up on we have some weird situation going on in the extra deck because of this but i think it's worth it we got the lab lab and the called by the grave for you know the ash blossoms and the the bells of the world and then we have Probably the most important and best addition to this deck is Transaction Rollback. So probably familiar with it at this point, but lets you copy a trap card in your graveyard by banishing itself from the graveyard. The field effect is rarely relevant because it copies a card in your opponent's graveyard, which not many decks play. But the main reason why this card is so 
good for Labyrinth is because it lets you play through Ash or Bell way better. Because if you discard this card for one of your furniture pieces, you're going to set a big welcome Labyrinth most of the time, unless you already have it. You activate it, it gets Ashed or, or Belled. You can transaction roll back and copy it and do it anyways. This is something that foregoes the once per turn clause on your welcome Labyrinth traps because it only copies the effect. It doesn't count as activating another copy of the card. And so you get to do it again on the same turn that it gets Ashed. And even if it doesn't get Ashed, you can even do it again. And this is just really what puts Labyrinth over the top. Like your good hands now now pretty much ignore Ash Blossom and Bell and if they don't have that you get even more advantage right and like there's even other scenarios where you you open like imperm rollback and a furniture so like on your opponent's first turn you go imperm then you go furniture this card rollback and then you can roll back copy the imperm again if you need to so it can even turn into a hand trap that way phenomenal card for for labyrinth overall three big welcomes Two welcomes, uh, obviously, like big welcome is the way better card. Welcome is relatively slow and you max out on furnitures. So I think it's reasonable to only play two. It's worth noting that you can make this deck even more focused on different labyrinth combos by playing more Arias, more welcome, more Ku Clock, more Lady. Like you can even up the labyrinth count a lot. I've been choosing to put, you know, the Unchained package and some, some hand traps in instead. Um, the last card is a Karma Cannon. I'm currently trying this, but I'm gonna be honest with you. I think you don't need this. I think in general, we're talking about this a lot in the deck building video where I feel like whenever you get to the point where you resolve a Lady to set a trap card of your choosing and then you get to activate that trap card, I think in most scenarios, you're already winning the game no matter which trap card you set. Like even if it's another welcome trap or an infinite impermanence, I think you're in a very good spot. So I have been hesitant on even playing this card, but it is one of those cards that really makes it so if you ever gain control over the game like that, your opponent has pretty much no way of coming back if you set this card because it's such a strong disruptive tool if you ever get control over the game. So I've been liking it regardless, but I don't know if it's 100% necessary. One quick thing I wanted to mention is that there's another phenomenal card coming out in phantom nightmare and because of course phantom nightmare is coming out soon and i want this deck profile to still be relevant i wanted to mention the black goat laughs is a normal trap card that comes out in phantom nightmare that is phenomenal in this deck because it has both a good on field effect and a good graveyard effect the graveyard effect is quite annoying if you discard it with with a furniture piece you can immediately use it on your opponent's first turn. And I think once that card comes out, you're going to play two to three copies of that card in Labyrinth. And I think that is going to be the end of the Ruma Karma Cat. For me personally, I would take out that card then because then you have another really powerful trap card that you can set with your lady if you ever get to do it but it also functions as like a combo piece when discarded for furniture because it provides immediate disruption and that's the 40 card main deck for the extra deck we have a couple of things that we need to take care of because of part of extravagance we need to play some duplicates and it is kind of tight because of that even though labyrinth is a deck that doesn't need its extra deck that much it's two typhons uh it's two chaos angel excuse the proxy i don't have a second chaos angel that card is 60 bucks right now two muckrakers um these are honestly can candidates to play three of uh, but because we have to fit the unchained cards we can only afford to play two and then it's two yamas and two soul of rages because you need both basically to do your unchained thing i've seen lists that play three of each which i could honestly see myself doing as well i've just historically whenever i've played part of extravagance two ofs have felt good to me like in terms of the I've, I've looked at the numbers and all that i think two ofs are fine in the case of these two because they are kind of connected together even if you keep your soul of rage after extravagance if you lose your yama it's worthless and vice versa i think it's it could be reasonable to play three of each and then one anguish and one abomination anguish is a one-off because it's not that essential to have it as, a, as something to link into with soul of rage if you play different things you can link into like sp as well it's fine if you banish the anguish as long as you keep the sp and vice versa and then worst case you can still link into a dark with the soul of rage which still turns it into a disruption which is okay and then when dark dies it searches something else so overall instead of playing like two or three copies of one of these cards you just have the utility of all three i think that's fine and then there's one anima the main purpose of anima is not to take your opponent's monsters which comes up sometimes but the main purpose is to be able to turn ku clock into a link monster for making sp be able to banish immediately right that's why anima is here there's a lot of other one of options for labyrinth extra decks uh, which are all i think viable cards you know your underworld goddess your clara and rushka i just think that with 
playing Extravagance and the Unchained package, we run into the problem of not being able to play those utility cards, which is the one downside of this build, but I still have been liking it quite a bit. The side deck, rather quickly, we have three bells. We have three copies of Nibiru. Like I said earlier, Nibiru is a phenomenal card in this deck because you have so many other interruptions to pair it with. So I was even considering main decking it, which I honestly think you could. Bell is a card that I think is going to be very strong in the upcoming formats. It covers the mirror matches. It's decent against fire king to stop garunix in the graveyard decent against runic decks it's decent against brand it just has a lot of applications i like bell in most of my side decks right now i wanted to play at least some amount of best deals because i i do really like them in this deck i like them in the upcoming format in a decent amount of matchups not in the main deck obviously because the fire decks are not going to be weak to them but there's a bunch of matchups where these are decent like tier elements mainly but even in like the lab mirror match you would probably cite these in they do something against Minadium as well and you can them with big welcome in any grindy game state which i've always been a big fan of two shufflers these cards are historically good in this deck because they are good furniture discards so if you ever get into a situation where you can't afford to discard a, a shuffler for a furniture piece it's like it's really really strong and like matchups that are graveyard centric uh, these just go in we've got three cross outs which i initially uh, discussed on stream purely as a going first card to ignore ash and and bell which i think is a valid reason to play the card at first i thought there was stuff that was more important in my in my side deck but then i realized this card is also pretty much the best thing you can do in the mirror match going first and second honestly so uh, that's kind of what tipped it over the edge for me of playing this card <laughs> once again i think it's an interesting sort of process that goes on in the whole deck build video because we go through like we go through different side deck options and i go for cross out and i'm like i'm not sure if this deck needs something else for going first and so i put it aside and then later on i go back to it and i'm like wait but this also covers labyrinth so it does like two things in one card which i'm always a big fan of so that's how cross out ended up being in here and then the remaining two i just put two cosmic cyclones i wanted to play three but i think in favor of bestials i i had to cut the third i'm a big fan of cosmic cyclone i think the card is going to be pretty versatile especially this is also partially uh, already in preparation for phantom nightmare because going first i'm a huge fan of this card into fire king and even going second hitting the fire king island is pretty good the main reason why i would play it in the current format even even is for runic decks runic decks are typically a problem for labyrinth and cosmic cyclone covers it pretty well while also being a pretty solid card against fire king and then going first it's even very good in a lot of other matchups like i would i would cite it going first against Monadium to hit the field spells against tier to hit pearl rhino or scream against fire king to hit the field spell it's a very versatile card i'm a big fan of it i wish i could play three but space was a little tight that is the list let me just very quickly show you an example of how the unchained card work and for everything else you know i suggest you check out the video on the plus channel but i feel like i've said that often enough at this point the main idea is whenever you have two fiends on the board i'm going to give you an example if you open a, a hand like ariana and big welcome the play that i like to do is i go ariana into arias right and then arias uses its effect to set the big welcome and then you activate the big welcome which if you don't get ashed here you're pretty much good to go you're you're popping off if you do happen to get ashed you chain arias and bring it back and now what you can do because you have two fiends normally this wouldn't really do anything you can link the two fiends into yama yama adds Sharvara. Sharvara now needs to pop any other card in your hand, which I'm going to be honest with you, uh, it can even pop something like a transaction rollback, which would be good for you in this case. Even though if you had transaction rollback, you would probably search furniture with Ariana. But in general, you can pop anything from your hand that you can set that you can maybe recur later or that you don't really need at this moment to just special the Sharvara from your hand. And then you link these two off into an Unchained Soul of Rage and the Sharvara sets you the escape of the Unchained. This is just out of two fiend monsters that didn't really do anything defensively because your big welcome was stopped you were pretty much sitting on almost nothing you have this which is a pretty sick uh end board honestly for getting ashed on your big welcome and not having resolved any of your really uh broken cards pretty much you link with your opponent's monster either into an sp or a unchained soul of anguish it depends you know you can sp little knight for the immediate banish but you can also go soul of anguish to keep your trap card life obviously and then you go pop your 
your trap uh, with the trap you can pop the the anguish and get the floating effect as well and honestly the the reason why i think it's actually quite uh, potent is because the charvara is not even that bad of a draw if you ever draw the charvara in these sort of situations you can just summon it out by popping one of your fiends you just make rage directly and set the trap and you're in the same spot and it even saves your ariana from imperm because it's a quick effect you know it's a quick effect to destroy a fiend so if your ariana gets imperm you can dodge it so i think the charvara i wouldn't consider it a bad draw it might it's even a good draw in some situations uh, so i've been liking that the only thing that's bad the trap is not a great draw but you can just pitch it for furnitures it's fine like it's honestly okay to draw the one uh trap card usually and i felt like that was worth it i think this this combo has raised the ceiling of the deck a decent amount in my testing game so far been a fan of it I do see how the deck gets even more tight with the release of the Black Goat Laughs, though. So that is something you have to consider. You know, do you want to maybe cut these cards for more options? Let me know what you think of specifically these two in the comments down below. And also let me know what you think about this deck in the upcoming format. Because, you know, everyone is talking about the fire decks, obviously. But I think this deck actually does have its merits in the upcoming format. And it's pretty good, I, I still think. It's, it's definitely going to be at least tier two. Definitely able to top tournaments during fire format but let me know what you think and let me know which other decks you would like me to cover especially once phantom nightmare hits the shelves next week i'm very much looking forward to it and you guys can look forward to a lot more of this kind of content but especially also we're gonna you know step up the gameplay content a lot during these upcoming weeks we're going to be testing all kinds of phantom nightmare decks both live on stream but i'm sure a lot of the games are also going to make their way onto the channel so make sure you're subscribed to the channel leave the feedback for this sort of remote uh, content in the comments down below until then hope you have have a wonderful rest of your weekend or week whenever you're watching this and thank you for watching bye bye peace